Hello everyone, let's work on future contract example. First of all, future contract definition. Currency future contracts specify a standard volume of a particular currency to be exchanged on a specified settlement date and a pre-specified date. So the keyword for future contract is standard. Okay. Uh, one more thing, the pre-specified rate uh, we mentioned before is normally called future rate and it is not what we learned before which is the future spot rate the future spot rate refer to the exchange rate in spot market or cash market in a future date say January 5th uh, 2050 okay typically the settlement date for future contract is the third Wednesday in March, June, September, and December. So let's look at the first example. On January 10, Takuma company anticipate that it will need Australia dollar in March. So therefore, Takuma decided to purchase a future contract that specify 100,000 euro. 100,000 Australia dollar and the settlement date is March, which is March 19. On January 10, the future contract is priced as 53 cents per Australia dollar. Okay? Uh, more than a month later, Akuma realized that, okay, it will not need Australia dollar anymore. And therefore, it has to get rid of the first contract by doing a simple thing. It sell a future contract on Australia dollar. Remember that in January 10, it initiated a buy contract, right? And now it uh, have a new sell contract. And that contract is 100% the same as the one it purchased in January. The same settlement in March the same volume of 100,000 Australia dollar. The only thing different is, in February 15, the future contract price is different. It is now 50 cent per Australia dollar. Let's see the position of Tacoma in the first, uh, I mean, in, in this slide. So, first of all, for January, January 10, Akuma purchase a future contract and you can see it here, okay? It will receive 100,000 Australia dollar at the expiration date of March 19. In exchange, it have to pay 53 cents per unit of Australia dollar. In other words, it have to pay as outflow negative side, it have to it has to pay 53,000 US dollar. Now, on February 15, when it realized that it have to get rid of the first contract, so it create or it sell a similar contract, right? So you can see here, when it sell, it have to deliver 100,000 Australia dollar. And how much it receive? It receive 50 cent each, so you take 50 here, 50 cent times 100,000, so it receive, positive side, receive $50,000 at, at the expiration date. So now, at the expiration date or at the settlement date, March 19, what happened is, from the first contract, it get 100,000. And it have to deliver 100,000 Australian dollar according to the second contract. So basically, it have no provision on Australia dollar at all. Okay. So, however, on US dollar side, yes, it have something. First of all, it pay 53,000 according to the first contract. It receive. 50,000 according to the second contract. So you combine, clearly there is a loss of 3,000. Okay, so a few note here. On its account, Tacoma has two contracts. Okay, 
which offset each other. And because the purchase price of 53 is higher than the sell price of 50, Tacoma lose $3,000, right? Let's look at the second example. On April 4th, a future contract specified 500,000 Mexican peso at a settlement date of June, and this contract is priced at 9 cents per Mexican peso. On the same day, a speculator who expects that peso will decline decided to sell future contract on peso. The thing is, if you believe that something going down, right? And right now, the future price is still at a high level. So you decided to sell here, to sell it at this level. By the expiration date, okay? You can see that you can buy that currency low and deliver according to the future contract at a better price. Now, assuming that at the settlement date, June 17, the spot rate of peso appeared to be 8 cents. Okay, you see, when it sells, it is 9 cents, and now it goes down to about 8 cents. Yeah, it kind of depreciates, right? So, what is a profit or loss? on the above speculative position. So let's look at the, I mean, let's look at the cash flow. So on January, on, Jan, on June 17, the seven date, the spot rate appeared to be 8 cents. So you can see that from the forward contract, okay, the speculator have to deliver because it's sell Mexican peso, right? It, the speculator have to deliver 500,000 Mexican peso and receive 9 cents each. So here is the amount of US dollar it received, right? On the other hand, the speculator can buy Mexican peso from spot market, right? So it buy 500,000 from the spot market in order to offset its obligation in the forward contract. So 500,000 here will flow directly to the other party of the forward contract. Now, how much it have to pay for that 500,000? On that date, the change rate is 8 cents. So you take 8 cents times 500,000. So it is a cost. So now, you can do the math. Mexican peso is gone. We don't care about that anymore. Here is what it received. Here is what it paid. So now you combine those two numbers and you can find easily the profit or loss for that uh, provision. And by the way, I'm sorry, this one is the future contract. Hold on one second. In the future contract. Right? So let's look at that one. Now, assuming that on the settlement date of June 17, the spot rate appeared to be unfortunately turned into 10 cents. Okay? Now, what happened to the speculator? So, first of all, on the side of the future contract, nothing changed. Speculator sell 500,000 Mexican peso, so it have to deliver 500,000 peso. At the pre-specified rate of 9 cents, so basically, here is what it received. Nothing, nothing can be changed, right? However, market condition change, and in this case, when it buy 500,000 peso to pay for the obligation, okay? Now, how much? It pay in dollar term, so it pay ten cent per unit. So you take ten cent times five hundred thousand peso. So here is the cost. Here is the revenue, right? So you compare two number here. You will easily find how much is is the profit or loss 
In terms of peso, 500,000 inflow, 500,000 outflow cancel each other. We don't care about that anymore. So you only need to compare the cost and revenue in US dollar and figure out the profit loss. Okay. So the last thing uh, I want to tell you is the general rule here. A uh, few of them. So if a currency depreciate in the future, and if you sell that currency in forward or future market, this position will end up in profit. So just like I tell you before, if it go down like that, and now you have a chance to sell at a high price, you will make profit. However, if the currency The same currency is expected to go down and you decided to buy. Now, that is a disaster. Because if you buy at that level in the future when the currencies go very low and you still need to pay that high price, right? And, and therefore, you will end up with a loss. On the other hand, let's look at the situation where the currency appreciates in the future. Now, if the currency appreciates, And you decided to sell this currency in the forward or in the future market today at the low price. Okay, you will see that in the future the price go up and you stuck with the forward or future rate here. So therefore, you will end up with a loss. However, if the same thing happen, the currency appear to appreciate in the future, and if you buy at the future rate. Or the forward rate here you will make money because at the settlement date when the value of that currency going up like that and you still lock in the cost at that low so clearly you will get profit now, one thing we need to know we need to pay attention is a phrase in the future okay nobody know about the future and therefore I mean, any decision to speculate in the derivative market is very risky. You never can tell if you make money or you lose money. Okay, thank you.